Hello guys and welcome to today's class. In the last class, we discussed the Laplace transform of the unit pulse signal, which is a type of square wave. A type of square wave, sorry. Now in today's class, we are going to identify the real square wave itself. We're going to try to determine the Laplace transform of the signal shown below so we are going to try to determine the laplace transform of a signal that is represented like this so as usual the first thing that you need to do is to define the behavior of the signal okay over the entire interval of definition the entire de interval of definition is from c equal to zero to t equal to infinity so identify how x of t behaves so x of t will behave as usual you put it in a branch that represents the piecewise continuous behavior of x of t now first of all let's see what is happening we can see that from 0 to t when t is 0 to t okay the the value of x of t is constant at 1 so this is um a high or a positive so we can represent it as the value of x of t is 1 whenever t is between 0 and capital letter t. So we can also see that the value of x of t has now flipped and it has now reversed polarity to minus 1. So this is a high. So this is a negative. Okay negative polarity or negative high so minus one so the value of your x of t is minus one between the interval t and 2t so you can write it like this that the value of x of t is minus one between t and 2t then finally you can see that the value of x of t is now resting on zero all, all across the remaining portions of the interval so the value of x of t from 2t to infinity is zero so you could write it like this that the value of x of t is zero from 2t less than t less than infinity or if you just want to write t greater than 2t so any of these two can work okay they are both the same thing is that okay so now that we've defined the behavior of x of t the next step will be to take the laplace transform the laplace transform of your x of t is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity and you now have x of t exponential minus st dt all right so when you have it like this the next step is to break this particular integral from 0 to infinity into how many branches yes three branches from 0 to t t to 2t and 2t to what infinity so breaking it like this we're going to have integral from 0 to t we'll still put our x of t exponential minus s t dt then plus we'll now put from t to 2t x of t exponential minus s t dt and we'll now have plus 2t down to infinity then x of t exponential minus s t dt like this Okay, so this is exactly the same as this. So the next thing is now to replace the behaviors for each interval. So remember that your Laplace transform of x of t will now transform to capital letter x of s. So take note of something. So x of t and capital letter x of s is a Laplace transform pair. So this is what we call Laplace transform pair. So we take the Laplace transform of S here and we take the inverse Laplace transform of S to get from this point to this point of X of S. Okay, so we give the Laplace transform of X of T to go from this point to this point. So you could just simply replace everything here by S. So x of t and capital letter x of s remember this is a small letter x of t and this is a capital letter x of s we call them laplace transform pair 
Okay, because when you take the Laplace transform of x of t, you get capital letter x of s. And if you take the inverse Laplace transform of x of s, you're going to get your x of t. Okay, so x of s is now going to be integral from 0 to t. What is the behavior of x of t between 0 and t? So the branch tells us that that behavior is 1 from 0 to t. So you have your 1 here. 1 exponential minus s t dt and plus integral from t to 2t. The behavior of x of t between t and 2t is minus 1. If you check, dot exponential minus s t dt and you now have plus integral from 2t to infinity. The behavior of x of t between 2t and infinity is 0. Exponential minus s t dt. Now, as usual, this one will become zero because of this term yeah so you don't need to deal with this you just focus on this one so your x of s is now going to be equal to so when you simplify this you have integral from zero to t exponential minus s t dt and when this minus one comes out you get minus integral from two from t to two t and exponential minus s t dt somebody will say we are integrating the same thing stdt and stdt and call the answer zero so the answer is not equal to zero why is it not equal to zero because of your definite integral okay your definite integral has affected the nature of this answer so integrating from here to here is not necessarily the same as integrating from here to here and the reason is because of the behavior of the exponential function Okay, the exponential function, just as its name implies, is an exponential function. So it is not a linear function that when you integrate over maybe equal intervals, you expect to get equal value. Okay, it behaves exponentially and nonlinear. So don't make the mistake of assuming that this and this, irrespective of the definite integral, will evaluate to zero. But you need to do the hard work of opening the integral and seeing what your answer is going to be. So x of s is going to be in this case. Remember that when you integrate this, you're going to get a, um, exponential minus s t over minus s. So we are taking this one from 0 to t. <coughs> then if we integrate this one, it's the same thing, exponential minus s t over minus s. Then from t to 2t. Now see what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply that skill that I taught you in the last class, the skill of using the negative sign to reverse the direction of your definite integral. So this will become exponential minus st all over s. So the minus sign has now reversed the polarity. So instead of t to 0, we'll have 0 to t and minus. So the same thing will happen here, exponential minus st all over s. So instead of 2t to t will have t to 2t so the reason why it's like this is because the negative sign has reversed the direction so that's the power of minus signs in definite integral you can reverse the direction of your definite integral and you can make your work in integration very simple and straightforward so applying definite integral when t is 0 and when t is t will have exponential minus s dot 0 all over s minus exponential minus s t all over s for this first part and you now have minus when t is t versus when t is 2t okay so you replace this t with t in the first case exponential minus s t all over s minus you replace t with 2t exponential minus 2st that's what you get or s2t i just replaced it like this and all over s like that okay so at the end of the day you will just try to simplify this x of s becomes the whole of this one is 1 the whole of this is 1 because exponential minus s dot 0 is exponential 0 and exponential 0 is 1 so the whole of this term is 1 over s and minus evaluating this you just get minus st all over s then opening the bracket you have minus exponential minus st all over s and minus times minus is plus exponential minus 2st all over s so what have we found out? We'll have that our x of s is 1 all over s. 
these two have the same magnitude but it's just that they are adding in the negative direction negative addition making them minus 2s minus minus 2 exponential minus st over s and plus exponential minus 2st over s so we could factor out uh, the 1 over s giving us 1 minus 2 exponential minus st plus exponential minus 2st okay so we could leave our answer like this so if you look at this answer you can either leave it like this or you can recall that 1 minus 2x then plus x square is still the same thing as you having 1 minus x all square okay so if you look at this very well you agree with me that i'm correct so if i want to apply it to this answer i can see my x of s is 1 over s taking x as this particular value over here you will have 1 minus exponential minus st all squared so 1 over s into 1 minus exponential minus st all squared okay is your answer in this case or you can say x of s is 1 minus exponential minus st all squared all over s someone that wants to be very tricky can see 1 minus exponential minus st all over roots s all square <laughs> oh please don't go to this area this area is for pros so i think you should just settle down maybe um here settle down um at this point or you can settle down here okay so this is the main one that your lecturer will probably want to see. So um, this is about it for Laplace transforms and of um, finite signals, okay? Laplace transforms of finite signals. So the signals are finite because they are not defined over an, inter um, an infinite um, time interval. They are just defined from one portion of time to another. Like when time is zero to when time is two, T. T is normally a symbol for period in physics and mathematics. Okay, so um, you can see that this signal only exists across a particular finite time interval. So that's why this Laplace transform for finite time analysis is different from the normal one we know. So in the last class, we talked about the sawtooth wave where we saw that the Laplace transform of the sawtooth wave x of t was giving us a particular funny answer it was giving us a 1 over s and something i don't know if you can remember but that was because of the behavior of that particular x of t now the normal sort of wave that is defined over an intervite um, an infinite interval that's the laplace transform of t itself when x of t is completely t for all time interval from zero to infinity that will give you one over s and it will neglect any term in the bracket so laplace transform of uh c is uh i think is uh yeah one over s okay one over s laplace transform of uh t raised to the power of n is n factorial i think is one over s square rather Sorry, so this was a 1 over x square, right? Good. n factorial over x raised to the power of n plus 1. So very good. So the Laplace transform of our sawtooth was 1 over x square into something in brackets. You could look up that one by yourself later on. Now, the Laplace transform of t, the normal um, sawtooth function that is defined from 0 to infinity, is 1 over x square. No strings attached. But the reason why the sawtooth that you see is having some things in the bracket is because instead of us to define the sorted function from zero to infinity we defined it for only a portion of time precisely from zero to one so defining it from c equal to zero to t equal to one made this term in the bracket to appear but when you define it from t equal to zero to t equal to infinity you're just going to get what one over s squared that's when you integrate from zero to infinity 
t dot exponential minus t dt you're going to get one over s squared okay so um this is just the summary of laplace transforms for finite functions functions that are defined over a chunk of time rather than the whole infinite period from zero to infinity so i hope you've learned one or two things from this video some integration techniques some simplification techniques and i hope you like the video please hit the like button hit the subscribe button share it to your friends and i will see you another time if you have questions or if you have comments the comment box is there for you you know to drop one or two and i'll be glad to respond to you very soon in the meantime, stay blessed and bye.